Hello friends. So today we are going to learn about equivalent weight. Now you might think that what the hell is this new term? What, what is equivalent weight? So before going there, let me ask you a question. Okay. So if I give you an equation, suppose H2SO4 to react with say sodium hydroxide NaOH, we know that if an acid in a base reacts, the output comes out to be a salt, in this case Na2SO4 plus H2O. Okay. So in this reaction, if I ask you that how much H2SO4 should I take to react with NaOH, how much NaOH? So the amount of NaOH and H2SO4 which will react to give me say one mole of Na2SO4. Okay, so you have to tell me that how much NaOH I should use, how much H2SO4 I should use to produce one mole of Na2SO4. Now this is a question, this is a fairly simple question. Now if you look at this reaction, you'll say okay, it's a fairly simple question, I can answer it. All I have to do is that balance this reaction. So there are two Na's, so I'll say this two Na, Na, NaOH, so if I look, there are two hydrogens, there are two plus two, four hydrogens, so I'll just make it two as well. You know, this reaction seems really nice and balanced. It was easy for you to do because it was a very easy reaction to balance. But if I give you a very tough reaction and all of a sudden reactions start getting tough, balancing them becomes a tedious task. And you still want, I still want you to tell me that how much H2SO4 should I take and make it react with NaOH to produce Na2SO4. Now, mole concept is a tough thing. You say, we need one mole here and two mole here to give get one mole of NA2SO4. Now wouldn't it have been nicer if only I needed to take one of this one of this something like one, one something of this one something of this to get one something of this rather than one two and one okay. So equivalent weight if I tell you it, is a magical unit, it's a very different way of measurement. Mole is one way of measurement, equivalent weight is another way of measurement. And it's it's that kind of measurement that if I take one equivalent weight of say any substance A, any, any chemical A or any molecule A and I react it with one equivalent weight of any other molecule, these can be any molecules in the universe, B, my output will be one equivalent weight of whatever the output comes, whatever the output comes, one equivalent of say C or D or plus may Jovi product. Suppose the product of reaction of A plus B is C plus D, then if I take one equivalent weight of A and add it with one equivalent of weight of B, my output will be one equivalent weight of C plus one equivalent weight of D. That means equivalent weight is a special kind of number which taken one unit, one unit, one unit gives me the result in terms of one units. And see how easy my task will become. Like, I don't even need to balance the reaction. All I need to say that one equivalent weight of H2SO4 react with one equivalent of NaOH to give me one equivalent weight of Na2SO4. No need to do this two and four and all those things. So you'll say, okay, this seems a very fascinating thing, but what the hell is it? It looks like a fascinating thing to do, but how do I calculate the one equivalent weight? To calculate one mole is very easy for me, but how can I calculate the one equivalent weight of H2SO4? Well, that's my friend is what I'm going to help you answer. That is what we are going to learn today. How to define and how to find one equivalent weight. So what is equivalent weight? How we define equivalent weight? So equivalent weight of any object in the universe or any chemical in the universe can simply be given by molecular mass divided by x. Now what the hell this x is? So this x is a very special kind of number which keeps varying by element. For every element it is defined in a different way. For every molecule it is defined in a different way. So let's say again then it, be then it becomes another tedious task to calculate x. But it's not that tedious. Let's see how. So suppose I have to calculate this x for any acid. We broadly divide uh, molecules in three categories, acid, bases and salt. 
and now we are going to see that how we calculate x for acids base and salts so for acids this x is nothing else but its basicity what is the basicity of an acid well for acids the basicity is defined as the number of h plus ions this acid can give that means suppose i have an acid h2so4 now you can simply see that there are two h plus ions this acid can give if i take another acid hcl there is only one h plus ion this acid can give that means the x here becomes 2 and the x here becomes 1 now how will i calculate the equivalent weight all I have to do is that in this equivalent weight, I have to put the molecular mass of H2SO4, which is very easy to calculate. You need to, there are two hydrogens, one sulfur, one oxygen. You know the hydrogen's molecular mass to be one. You can calculate the sulfur's oxygen mass. You can calculate the oxygen's, uh, oxygen's atomic mass and you can multiply oxygen's atomic mass by four plus sulfur's atomic mass plus multiplied by twice the hydrogen's atomic mass and you will have the molecular mass of H2SO4. And, all, and then you divide it by two. And then whatever the answer comes will be your equivalent weight of H2SO4. Okay. It was easy. No? Now, let me give you a very interesting case. That is, tell me, can you, can you find the acidity, sorry, basicity of H3PO4 and H3PO3? Now, these both look very similar. And in, in both of these, we think that there are three hydrogens. But if we go and see the structure of them, we'll find out that, okay, that's not actually the case. In case of H3PO4, there's a phosphorus, there's this one oxygen, there's this oxygen, this oxygen, and this oxygen. And a hydrogen is attached to them all. Okay, if you can simply draw the structure. Now here you'll see that this hydrogen is attached with oxygen. So all these three hydrogens can leave this surface because oxygen is electronegative. That means hydrogens can leave and I have three H plus ions. Whereas in case of H3PO3, I have a phosphorus attached with an oxygen. I have two oxygens. And that's why two hydrogens will attach to the oxygen and one hydrogen will directly attach to the phosphorus. Now in this case, phosphorus is not that, radio, that electronegative as oxygen. So these two hydrogens can simply leave this surface. So that means there are only two oxygens two H plus ions which can leave this H3PO3. So H3PO3 can only produce two H plus ions. Whereas H3PO4 can produce three H plus ions. That means the X in both the cases, in this case becomes three, in this case becomes two. That means the basicity of H3PO4 is three and H3PO3 is two. Now that's, that's a very, that's another interesting case. And that's how we can find the X for acids. Now let's move to the basis. Now that I know how to calculate X for acids, let's see and uh, find out that how can we calculate um, X for bases. So for bases, X is basically the acidity. It's very simple to remember. For X it's basicity and for, for acids it's basicity. For bases it's acidity. Now what do I mean by the acidity of a base? So suppose if I have an NaOH ion, in this, the OH minus ion, so it can give one OH minus ion. That means the acidity of any base is basically the number of OH minus ions this base can give. And this is how we define the acidity of a base. And this means if it can give one OH minus ion, the X is basically one. So all you have to do is calculate the molecular mass of sodium, sodium hydroxide, that is calculate, <coughs> add the atomic mass of sodium to oxygen to hydrogen and you'll have the molecular mass of NaOH and then divide it by one. That means divided by nothing and that will be the equivalent weight of NaOH. Now you have <coughs> acidity of NaOH. Now let's see, that means base. And in base we saw that number of OH minus ions it can give. Now let's see what is, we, we know acids, we know base, now we need one more thing which is salt. Now in salt there are no H minus or H plus ions, so how will you calculate the 
x in salt. So for any salt, say NaCl is one salt, it's very simple. In salt, the x can simply be calculated as the total positive charge on cation. That means x is total positive charge on cation. Okay. How? So in any plus, I have one charge. That means if I found out the molecular weight of any and divided by one, that will be its equivalent weight. That's very simple. Now, if I take another example, AlCl3, in AlCl3, aluminium has plus three charge. That means total, <coughs> uh, total positive charge on cation is plus three. That means my X becomes plus three. Now you have to calculate the mass of aluminium and add it with thrice the mass of chlorine and that will be your molecular mass. Divide it with x, that is 3, and then you'll get the equivalent weight. And once you have the equivalent weight, what's that, what's the advantage of having an equivalent weight? If I know one equivalent weight of AlCl3, and if I if I know one equivalent weight of some other element, and if I know they react and they form some other things, I can simply say that one equivalent of AlCl3 is plus one equivalent weight of that other material gives me the one equivalent weight of the product which they will be forming. So the amount becomes very easy. Suppose I have Al2SO4 whole thrice. Now what do you say? How many plus 3, to, what is the total positive charge of Al2SO4 whole thrice? See, we have aluminium here which has plus 3 charge and there are two aluminium atoms. That means its total positive charge becomes plus 6. That means X here becomes plus 6. So calculate the molecular mass divided by 6 and you'll have your equivalent weight. So what did we learn today? Today, we saw what is equivalent waste. Equivalent waste is something which is, uh, which is defined for every molecule and in such a way that one equivalent weight of any molecule reacts with one equivalent weight of any other molecules to give one equivalent weight of product. Okay, now how do we calculate equivalent weight? Equivalent weight can be calculated by finding molecular mass and dividing it with a certain number x. Now, what is this x? It becomes a very fascinating thing. So this x changes for acid, bases and salt. For acids, it's its basicity. For bases, it's its acidity. For salts, it's the total number of positive charge on cation. And another interesting thing is that total number of positive charge on cation, since salts are electrically neutral, that means the total number of positive charge on cation is actually equal to nothing else but the total number of negative charge on anion. That means you can either say total positive charge on cation or total negative charge on anion. Both will do fine. So I hope you were able to understand and grasp the concept of equivalent weight and I hope you will now don't have any uh, problem in calculating the equivalent weight of any molecule.